Hello, Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all the viewers watching our sessions out there. This is Simran Singh and you are watching this particular live telecast of NCRT on Evidya channel number 9. Besides, we have so many different mediums through which you all can connect with us and you can also participate in our live interactive sessions by raising your queries or either by sharing your feedback in the comment section of NCERT official. That's our YouTube channel. So here for half an hour, we have a session of mathematics for all class 9 students and we are going to discuss the topic that is statistics part 2. This means that we have already discussed this particular topic at length in one of our sessions and you may also watch NCRT officials video links in order to obtain all the details regarding part 1. So providing us more insights into the conversation we have with us Mrs. Bina Prakash Madam. Namaskar ma'am. Namaste. Good afternoon everyone. We welcome you. Uh, Madam is senior PGT mathematics serving at Campion School Bhopal. So viewers, you know the different mediums to which you all can connect with us. So very quickly, Madam, I'll request you to give us a recap of what we have discussed so far and then we will move to the today's session. Hello, everybody. So today, we actually in the last class, we just started with the statistics part. And in statistics, we took the pictorial representations of the data. Now, this is one way of representing our data that is through this picture we are able to analyze or answer certain questions. This picture is giving us a clear picture of certain informations. Now, the information could be how many students like dance. So they are different activities. So I think Simran, you can read from the um, picture the questions that I'll be asking. So, in, in some cases where you have so many data, you keep on reading the data, it becomes a little difficult to analyze. All these data needs to be analyzed, so it becomes a little difficult to analyze. But if you see this picture, you are able to analyze it immediately. Whatever information you want, you may not get it immediately. Like which activity is taken by the student, the maximum number of students takes which activity? Music. That is also very clear. Which activity is pre preferred lesser? That That's is also very cricket. clear. cricket. And is there any activity which is very closer? Yes, there are so many activities that is make students, they try to come to that is all these activities are preferred by the students. So all this information we can interpret through this graph. And this is a representation. So this is a pictorial representation. And this is known as bar graph. We have another form that is known as pie chart. This way also we can represent certain information. This information is related to cost of construction of a house, which is expressed in the form of a sector of the circles. It is, a circle has been divided into different sectors. So these sectors gives us an information about the question that we have, that is cost of construction of a house. Now the cost of, a con cost of construction depends upon so many things. The question asks us what is the amount spent on the materials. So you can always find out in percentage how much amount of money will be spent on the materials. So looking at this inform in this chart, we can analyze certain things. So that's way that's a way to represent the data. So we had the pictorial representation. Now we have the graphical representation of data. Now the graphical representation, the first data is the bar graph. Again, the bar graph we discussed in the last class. Till now we had discussed where we have different Again, it is an activity or reasons that we have and there is statistics based, data based on it. So this was an information regarding the illness of women. So there were different reasons for the women to get sick and that reason is given in percentage. So that is the representation we have here, which is known as bar graph. Now today what we'll be doing is we'll take up the next representation that is known as the histogram. Now, what is histogram? The histogram is actually the graphical representation of a data in the form of rectangles. The length is the frequency and the breadth is the class interval. So that's very important here. That is, again, it's a form of a bar graph, but there's a slight difference between the bar graph and the histogram. In histogram, we have the rectangles with uniform width. And the next thing is, 
the intervals that we have they are known as the width of the rectangle they should be continuous so what do we need here it is 0 to 10 that is something like consider marks obtained by out of 100 by 50 students so this is an information of 50 students marks in some subject which is out of 100 so what information do we have from here we get that there are there is one student who has scored between 0 to 10 there are three of them between the range 10 to 20 and there are 10 of them between the range 50 to 60 so all this information we have made it in converted into a histogram now here what we see is the histogram that we have is a form of a bar graph where we represent the rectangles the representation is in the form of rectangles now the rectangles have equal width the width of each rectangle isn't it same everywhere the rectangles width is the same fine but the length of the sorry the length of the rectangle the length of the rectangle this is the length of the rectangle that represents the number of students so on the x-axis we see that's the marks that we have it's the marks that we have and on the y-axis we have the number of students the number of students so these rectangles they represent the information now again on seeing this in rectangles many things can be analyzed we can always get a clear picture before reading the information before reading the information you can see from this graph what is the situation or what is the score of the students of the classes isn't it just see the graph can you analyze something what analysis can you do by seeing the graph i find that there are students who maximum number of students who are in the range of 50 to 60 because that's a rectangle which has the longest length see and this next rectangle that we find is the rectangle which has the data that is it is 9 that is 30 to 40. So this particular class in this particular class there are max, maximum students whose range is between 50 to 60. Next range that we find is 30 to 40. So you have to read this and reading it will require little analysis. But when you see this figure don't you have a clear picture that is most of the students they are in this range they are, they are clustered here isn't it most of the students they are clustered in this that is we have the students they are clustering in this region so what is it saying that majority of students they are getting somewhere around 20 to 30 40 to 50 and then 60 to 80 so these interpretations can be easily done with the help of this histogram right so the condition to make this histogram is the intervals should always be continuous and they should always be of equal length that is width of each class interval should be same so we have this particular data based on the conditions that width of each that is the class intervals length is same and they are with each class interval it is continuous fine now we move on to the next example now this is again an example where lifetime of neon bulb is expressed fine the number of bulbs which burns for 300 to 400 hours which runs for 400 to 500 hours which runs for 500 to 600 hours that is what we have in this slab now here also we find that the intervals are uniform and they are all continuous that is it is from 300 to 400 then 400 to 500 so both the conditions of the required information that we require for histogram is there now what is the other object that is we need to have on the x-axis the intervals and on the y-axis we have the number of lamps now when you see the number of lamps you find the lamps number are called two digit number and each division that we have is usually one unit that is we take it as one unit but if you take it as one unit you will require up to 86 units on y axis which is not as such possible for us to have it in the graph so what we do is we decide what will the, dis the length of this division unit be so i have decided to take it as 10 units 20 units and that way we have up to 90 units because we have seen that 
there are number of maximum number of lamps that we have is 86 which is burning for 600 to 700 hours so all the rest they are all lesser than 86 so 90 will be able to have, will be managed able with this 90 now again the width of the time that is the lifetime is not less than 300 it's somewhere between 300 to 400 and 400 to 500 and goes up to 1000 hours so when you make it in, on the x axis you will find that the x axis value they start from 0 onwards 0 to 0 1 so we have divided the units in terms of hundreds fine but again you find that 0 to 100 or 100 to 200 200 to 300 they don't say that is all the lamps they are burning for about 300 hours there are no lamps which burns less than 300 hours so why should we take up that because if you consider that way we can have that interval as we can always take that interval as 200 to 300 we can introduce that inter interval 100 to 200 and 0 to 100 now in that case how many lamps are there which is burning for 0 to 100 is there any no so what is the frequency of it how many numbers of lamps are there that's zero likewise with the 100 to 200 they are still zero 200 to 300 they are zero so all those uh, lamps that is which have which are burning for less than 300 they do not exist that means such rectangles will not exist so why should we show that rectangle which does not exist so can't we shift our axis we are actually shifting our x axis in such a way that we require 300 we bring the 300 nearer to this 0 but when you bring it what is happening to the other interval 0 to 100 and so we have actually broken it and we have a kink here that says that from 0 to 200 it is already in it it is like you're picking up from this and shifting its position here because we don't require that region so that's a kink that we need to take up because we don't take up from 0 onwards so our interval is from 30, 300 to 400 400 to 500 so this is one information that we have from this in from this data so we can always make this adjust, adjustment for the axis fine now we move on to the next example the next example is for again the length of the 40 leaves of a plant are measured in correct uh, measured correct to 1 millimeter and the obtained data is represented in the following data now see the data what is the data saying the length in millimeter of the 40 leaves that we have there we are taking the for, uh, lengths of 40 leaves we find that there are leaves whose lengths are from 118 to 126 millimeters then it is from 127 so obviously we are ignoring the decimal part we are taking only whole number we know that on the scale we cannot take numbers lesser than that is numbers between 126 and 127 for millimeters so that's the reason why have we have this data this form it had it been centimeter we could have got it as continuous but it is in millimeter we cannot have between them it's obvious from the scale so what we find is this particular question the data given is a discontinuous it is saying it is up to 126 then it starts from 127 up to 135 then it starts from 136 up to 142 so this, there is a break so histograms contain condition says that the, the intervals should not have intervals should not have a break should not have a break so how do we handle this situation how do we make it continuous what we do is we extend both the ends this is how we extend just see this data we had it as 1 1 8 2 1 2 6 this was 1 2 7 to 135 what we did we extended this interval by 4.5 and this we reduced by 0.5 that gave us 117.5 so the next interval that we starts from 127 in fact starts from 126.5 and this way what have we made we have made a continuous interval 
So now you have everything from 117.5 to 126.5. Isn't it continuous? So that condition that which we had is must for making a histogram. We got it. So we have the intervals as continuous intervals. So now we can make the bar chart, uh, sorry, histograms. So each unit that we have, again, uh, there's a kink here. There's a kink here. You can see this kink because we don't require the information from 0 to 116. So that is already covered in, in it. But on y-axis, we require from 1 onwards. So we have from 1 onwards on y-axis, but on x-axis, we started with 117.5. And then this length is 126.5 and thus we have the more points. And this we find the rectangles. The lengths are the frequencies that we have, number of leaves. Fine. So we need to know that the interval that is given should be continuous. So we have the condition that intervals for making a histogram should be continuous. Second condition is they should be uniform. Now let us read this question. A teacher wanted to analyze the performance of the thing. Now out, which is out of 100. Seeing the marks she desired. That is she has seen the marks. And what did she do is she clubbed the marks. That is we usually write the interval no, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. But when she saw the marks then she thought of clubbing. What did she do? She clubbed 0 to 20 range. Then 20 to 30 go. 30 and 40 has been clubbed. For 60 to 70 ko club kar and then the last she wrote 70 above itte lo ko mila. So what we see here, the intervals are not length of intervals. The length of each interval is not say is not same. That's a very important condition that is required for making a histogram. So how do we handle this question? So this, let's make another table where we have this table says that we have the marks are from 0 to 20, 20 to 30, fine, 30 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 100. Now what is this representing 16 frequency, 16, what does that mean? That is, there are 16 students in the range from 0 to 20. Now, what does this number specify? 5. It represents there are 20, 5 students in the range 20 to 30. Then from 30 to 60, there are 9 students. 60 to 70, there are 7 students. So, we get information of different lengths. Let us make it uniform. How do we make it uniform? And ma'am, due to positive of time, class, I'll be requesting you to make it the last uh, question of the I session. Just part. Width of each class, here it is 20. It is 10 for the next 30 for the third, next 10 and the last one is also 30. So what we do is, let us see on which length we can uniform, make it uniform. So if you find that you can have it in the length of 10. So how do we convert the length of the rectangle in terms of 10? So this 20 is, that is there are 16 of them. So 16 of them for, is for the length 20. So how many will be there for the length 10? That says there are 8. Now the frequency for 0 to 20 will be 8. Then likewise, there are 5 for the length 10. And we are assuming that we have the rectangle with 10 rect. So this is 5. Then we have it's 9 out of 30 multiplied by 10 which comes out to be 3. And then it's 7 on 10 multiplied by 10 which is 7. And the last one is 15 on 30 multiplied by 10. So that comes out to be 10. That comes out to be uh, this is 5. So then how do we make this rectangles? We make the first rectangle with the width 20. It will have width 20. But what will its length be? Its length will be 8. So see the width of it. This is the width. And that has height. What is its height? Its height has to be 8. So height of it is 
eight. Fine. So now for the next one, the next one we have the same width. We have the width as it's for only ten. So we reduce the width of this. We'll reduce the width of it. It is from two to three. And then what is the height that we have? The length of the rectangle that we have? It is five. So let's bring the length of it to five. So what is observed? We find that the rectangles are of different widths, but we have taken care of the frequency of it. Though it was from zero to twenty, we could manage to get it for each length. That is for the length ten units. Fine. That's how we convert each of this. This is for each unit we have. Now the next length is for 30 units. So it's from 30 to 60. So we'll have to increase the width of the third rectangle. The width of the third rectangle will cover up three units, and its height is three. Height is three. So we have the histogram in so, this uh, case. So, ma'am, it is requested uh, from our end that we leave the question as it is and uh, let our viewers solve it. Because uh, due to I positive think now time, the students will be able to complete this hmm. histogram. The histogram will have different bits. That's the only thing. Okay. Of course, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for connecting with us in the conversation and sharing these important details regarding our today's topic, that is statistics. That remains an important concept for all class nine students. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers who have connected with NCERT for this particular live interactive session. So, viewers, before wrapping up the conversation, an important piece of information regarding G20 for all of you. We are proud that India assumed the G20 presidency and will convene the G20 Leaders Summit for the first time in the country in this year. That's 2023. The nation is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of everyone and in doing so manifest the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam or the world as one family thank you once again keep watching e vidya channels next up we are being back with our online training session on digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing or diksha so keep watching e vidya channels and take very good care of yourself namaskar